Hey, I want to share with you one of the most amazing theorems of mathematics. And it's so cool because we've already seen lots of examples of it, and now it's time to celebrate it. Now, before I actually share with you the theorem, I want us to take a look at an example similar to the kind of things we've been looking at. And I want us just to simply solve this polynomial equation. So the polynomial equation I want us to look at first is x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. So it's a quadratic. Everything is over to this side. It equals 0. It's looking great. Let's just try to see if we can factor this. Hope for the best. Be prepared for the worst. So x squared means I should have an x here and an x here. This tells me the signs are going to be different. So I'll have a plus and a minus here. And now the mission is, can I come up with two numbers whose product is 6, and yet when I take the appropriate difference, um, I'm going to get negative 1. Well, 2 and 3 work, right? Because 2 times 3 is 6. If I put the bigger number 3 here and 2 here, then notice I get x squared. Good. Here I see 2x minus 3x is negative x. Good. And then 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. This works. Awesome. So if we solve, I see that either x plus 2 equals 0, which means x equals negative 2 or x minus 3 equals 0, which means x equals 3. Well, wonderful. We've, so we've solved another quadratic equation. But notice that, as we've always seen with every quadratic equation, there are always two answers. Notice that here we see that the highest degree, the exponent, is 2, and we have two equations. Coincidence? No. And that brings us to the fundamental theorem of algebra. There are only a handful of theorems in mathematics that actually begin the fundamental theorem of blank. And now we're coming across one of them. The fundamental theorem of algebra says that whenever you have a polynomial equation, doesn't matter what the degree is or anything, when you have a polynomial equation, and the coefficients, those numbers, those constants that are multiplying the, the unknown x, when those constants are complex numbers, then that equation, when set equal to 0, will always have a solution, and the solution will be some complex number. Now remember, complex numbers also include the usual real numbers. So a real number is an example of a complex number, because any number, like let's say 3, can be written as 3 plus 0i. Well, that's the fundamental theorem of algebra. And it's actually due to um, Carl Friedrich Gauss, who actually proved this as his PhD thesis. He got a PhD for this amazing work. He was a young, young guy, and he did this great work then. Amazing. Now, one of the fantastic consequences of his amazing fundamental theorem of algebra result is that every polynomial will have as many solutions as its highest degree. So for example, here, this is a quadratic. It's going to have two solutions. Let's try another example just for fun and see if this really, really is true. Really, really is true. Hmm. OK, so I'm looking at x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x equals 0. OK, well, if you look at this example, uh, what do I notice? Well, I notice there's a common factor of x. So I can factor out the x, and when I do that, I'm left with an x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. And let's see if we can factor this quadratic. And in fact, we can. xx minus plus, and all I've got to do here is put a 4 and a 1, and I see that that's negative 4, and when I take the minus 4x, and 1x, I get a minus 3x. So I see x equals 0. That's what happens if this equals 0. I see x equals 4. That's what happens if this equals 0. And x equals negative 1. That's what happens when this equals 0. Notice 1, 2, 3 solutions, and this was a cubic. This is a consequence of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now I want to try one. I'm going to make this one up right now live. That's right. No one has ever seen this because I'm making it up right now live. Are you ready? I hope you're ready for this. I hope I'm ready for it. Do you think I am? I'm not so sure. OK, here we go. x squared. Are you ready? That's how I'm starting out. I'm starting out with x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. I just made that up. It's a homemade equation for us. Let's try to solve it. Now, we know that there are going to be two solutions. Let's see if we can find them. 
So x, x, they're both going to be the same sign, and they're going to be both negative. And 2 and 2, notice this checks because I see minus 2x, minus 2x, minus 4x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, awesome. And now what do I get? I see that either x minus 2 equals 0, which means x equals 2, or x minus 2 equals 0, and so x equals 2. So I have two solutions, but they're the same. So you might say, hey, I'm being ripped off. You're not being ripped off. Because a consequence of the fundamental theorem of algebra is that there will always be as many solutions as the power, the highest power, the exponent. But it's possible that those two solutions might be, in fact, the same number. A little weird, but we'd say this has multiplicity too because the same solution appears twice. But we get it twice. Notice that, that we get it from this piece and we get it from that piece. And that comes from the fact that this was quadratic. So we see the repetition, but it still counts as two solutions, not necessarily the same. I mean, not necessarily different. OK, now, let's try a real crazy one. Because remember I mentioned complex numbers in there? So let's try this one. x cubed plus x squared plus x equals 0. Now let's take a look at that. Now first of all, you'll notice that there's a common factor of x everywhere, so I can factor out the x. So that's going to be nice. So it's x times x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. And now I want to try to factor this, and so I see, and let's try to do that on a little separate page right here. So I'm going to see x times, so we hope for the best and we prepare for the worst. I put in an x and an x. They're both going to be the same sign. They're both going to be positive. Something times something equals 1, and yet their sum is going to be 1. Well, like 1 times 1 doesn't work. That would be the sum of 2. Uh, All right, so this can't be factored. That's OK. We can deal with that because we know about the quadratic formula. So we'd use the quadratic formula for this little piece. So let's just pick up x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0, and use the quadratic formula to find the solution. So I see that x equals negative b. That's the opposite of the coefficient in front of the x term, which in this case would be a 1. So opposite of that is negative 1, plus or minus. So we have two solutions hidden here. Square root of b squared, 1 squared is 1, minus 4 times a times c. That's an invisible 1 times 1 is 1, so I just get times 1. All divided by 2 times a, which is 2. And so what does this work out to be? Well, this works out to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 all over 2. Well, the square root of negative 3, how could I write that in a, in a slightly more comfortable way? Well, I could say the following. I could say, hey, you know what? If you want square root of negative 3, I will give you square root of negative 3. And here's how it would look. I'd write it as negative 1 plus or minus. And what I'll do is I'm going to write this as square root of 3 times square root of negative 1. Because remember, if we're multiplying, then everything can live under the square root in harmony. And I would have 3 times negative 1, which would be negative 3. Now, the square root of negative 1, of course, is the imaginary number i. So I could write this as negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3, that's a real number, times i all over 2. So there are two solutions to this quadratic, and the two solutions are negative 1 plus square root of 3i all over 2, negative 1 minus square root of 3i all over 2. Now, this was an original question that was a cubic, but remember that we factored out an x. So one solution is x equals 0. And then the other solutions will be the solutions to this quadratic, which we just found. So again, we see three solutions, the solution x equals 0 and these solutions. So if we summarize everything together, what we see is that we have three solutions to this, either x equals 0 or this equals 0. And in that case, we actually found the solutions. We saw x will equal negative 1 plus square root of 3 times the imaginary number i all over 2, or x equals negative 1 minus square root of 3 times the imaginary number i divided by 2. And so we again see three solutions. Notice that some of them are actually imaginary, which is exactly what was asserted, that if you have any polynomial equation with complex numbers, then you will always have 
a, at least one complex solution. In this case, we actually see two complex solutions. But as a consequence, an important consequence is, if the degree is three, there should be three solutions. That is the power of the fundamental theorem of algebra. The really cool thing doesn't have to be cubic. If you look at a 27th degree polynomial with lots of complex numbers as coefficients, you know that there will be a complex solution, and in fact, there'll be 27 of them, although they might not all be different. Very cool. Let's celebrate Gauss together, and I'll see you soon.